Those who heard Jesus use the illustration about the sheep pen didn't understand what he meant, so he explained it to them again. Anyone here have had a couple things explained to them over and over and over again? Okay, good. Glad I'm not the only one. Sometimes I'm like, I'm sorry, you're going to have to start over. Explain it like you're talking to a five-year-old. Maybe I'll get it then. So Jesus explains again, and he explains it in a slightly different way. Picking up in John 10, 6, I tell you the truth. I am the gate for the sheep. You can go ahead and underline that. I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and robbers, but the true sheep did not listen to them. Underline listen. Yes, I am the gate. Those who come in through me, underline that, will be saved. Underline that. As we read that last line, I think it begs the question, what does he mean saved? Those who come in through me will be saved. Saved from what? Saved from emotional harm, physical harm. But then I read it again. Those who come in through me will be saved. And I was reminded of another scripture that I memorized a long time ago. In John 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. And we're going to talk about this verse later in the series. So it is abundantly clear here that Jesus is speaking of eternal salvation. So choosing to make Jesus our gate, the one where we find our boundaries that protect us and show us how to live, and also our freedom, will help us not only to have an abundant life here on earth, but also an abundant life with him in heaven. Finishing out this section in John 10, 9. They will come and go freely and will find good pastures. And I'm going to finish out this verse, but first I want you guys to listen to it because I'm sure you've heard it before. There's a common verse that's used to talk about the devil and how he's active in our life. But now that we've learned all this, we can see a bigger story. The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. But my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. The thief is not just the devil. The thief is anyone or anything that, it is, that is a predator against Jesus's sheep. Anything that would distract you, anything that would lead you into a life of sin or darkness, any of the things that would pull you away from the destination that you were meant for. These are the thieves that we should be watching for. We shouldn't blame everything on the devil. Sometimes we gotta blame it on lust and we gotta blame it on our own issues and our own temptations and our own patterns. The thief is anything that would bring us out of the sheepfold away from Jesus. You got to know that if Jesus is the gate, that he is not, he's not letting anyone out unless they are forcing their way out. Jesus wants to protect you, but if you are walking away from the flock, you're going to be out of the flock's protection. I know for some of us, if we're honest, we can be resistant to the idea of being confined, being enclosed, or even having anyone tell us what to do. Nobody tells me what to do. I'm going to live my own life. It's been working out fine so far, right? I'm going to be authentic. I'll caution you. That is spiritual blindness right there. So I've got a personal story for you guys. I uh, am notoriously bad at locking doors. I swear I'm better. Except for right now, I'm not 100% sure if I locked my car door. But there was this one time that I was doing things around the house and the yard. And I think I went to the grocery store. I went to run some errands. And I left my front door wide open. Not just unlocked, wide open. And while I was out, my sister-in-law and my niece came over because Lenny had said, oh, yeah, go see Kirsten. She's home. I wasn't, so they're looking around in all the rooms. Kirsten, where are you? And they were a little worried. They called Lenny, is your wife okay? Where is she? I was just out shopping. I am so thankful that in that moment when I left the door wide open, that what happened to wander in was people who loved me and cared for me. But what could have wandered in is someone or something that didn't. And so I want to say this to you in your notes. Do not leave the door open on your life. Don't just let anything in. Listen to the voice of Jesus and let him guide you. Again, in your notes, know and follow the voice of Jesus so that you will run 
from anything else that would steal and kill and destroy the rich and satisfying life he has for you. I think what Jesus is driving home in this whole message is that if a predator of any kind is gonna come for his kids, he's saying, you're gonna have to go through me. You're gonna have to go through the gate. You're, if you're gonna attack her or attack him, you're gonna have to come through me. When we are within the confines of the sheep, sheep pen, when we are in the protection of Jesus, any predator that would come after you is going to have to go through Jesus. And if we're going to model our lives after him, and if we're going to be like Christ, we need to be those same people to the, the ones around us, our children and our spouses and our friends. We need to say, no, 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 no one is going after the people I love. They're going through me. I'm covering them in prayer. I'm encouraging them in the way to go. I'm challenging them to be more like Christ by the way that I live. No, no, you're not taking them down. You're going to have to go through me.